With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. Getting engaged is a moment worth cherishing. A one-of-a-kind ring that you design at Blue Nile can help your love sparkle. Just choose your diamond and setting. When you've found the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Finding the right engagement ring can be nerve-wracking. At Blue Nile, you'll have the expert guidance needed and a diamond guarantee that ensures you're getting the highest quality at the best price. Cherish all of life's moments and save up to 30% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I got a little bit annoyed this week. Someone I know referred to the phrase, sleeps to Christmas. I thought, what are you saying? Can you hear yourself? You're a grown-up. Never mind sleeps to Christmas. We're all about sleeps to Tokyo on anything but footy. This is your Olympic and Paralympic sport podcast. And every week we round up all the latest news and talking points as we edge closer to the Games of 2020. I'm Michael. And I'm John. And in the next half an hour or so, a huge decision for Olympic, Paralympic and world sport with Russia being banned from major sporting events for the next four years by the World Anti-Doping Agency following tampering of testing data. But we speak to an organisation that represents sports people across the world who says the sanction isn't near strong enough. We also round up the European Swimming Championships in Glasgow, the World Sailing Championships, Taekwondo, Rugby 7, Cycling, Bobsleigh, Skeleton, more snow sport and Commonwealth Games. It's a Christmas cracker. Yes. Too soon, Michael? Yes. There's lots to get through. There's lots to get through. And what gives us the right to pontificate about Olympic and Paralympic and Commonwealth Games sport? Well, both John and I are veterans of numerous Olympics, Paralympics, Commonwealths, World, European and National Championships across a whole host of different sports. And we love to hear your views, your opinions too, via our website at anythingbutfooty.com, on social media, on Facebook, Instagram and on YouTube. And you can tweet us at anything. But F, give us a follow as well if you could, please. And you can email us all the time, anythingbutfooty at gmail.com. But we start in Lausanne, in Switzerland, and we start with this huge decision uh, that has come out a few hours before we recorded this episode of Anything But Footy, and that is the four-year ban for the nation of Russia. This has been announced by the World Anti-Doping Authority, WADA. It means that Russia will be out of all major sporting events, so they will not be able to compete as a nation at Tokyo 2020. There will be no flag, there will be no anthem, And it might also impact the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. FIFA have said they are looking at the situation. It will not affect the European Championships in 2020, where, of course, St. Petersburg is one of the host cities, as UEFA does not come under this ruling. What we might see, though, is some Russian athletes competing under a neutral flag. Athletes who can prove that they are outside the system and therefore they can prove they are clean athletes. We touched on this in the last edition of the pod that basically Russia had been given a chance to redeem themselves after that McLaren report and missing the Rio Paralympics, Rio 2016 in athletics, London 2017, Doha 2019. And some people thought WADA were being weak by giving them the chance to come back. But actually, you know, they've now come out and said this is a ban of four years. 
It should have happened, frankly, in 2016 when the IOC, frankly, fudged it with Rio because it was too close to the Games and they really wanted Russia to be there. And WADA also made it clear, or the IOC also made it clear last week, they would say they would back up WADA, but they didn't want an entire ban on Russian athletes, just some of them. And I think that's where the, the question marks really now start to appear, Michael. And I was horrified, I know you were as well, when it became apparent in Sochi in 2014 that holes had been drilled in the walls of doping units and samples were removed and replaced with clean ones. And that systematic statewide doping was what that McLaren report uh, investigated. Now, that wasn't enough for some people. As I say, the IOC fudged it. They said you can carry on competing in Rio. But the Russians couldn't even be trusted to hand over untampered with data to try and prove their regime was clean. And WADA found, again, manipulation of the Moscow laboratory data from January 2019 and files were deleted and altered. So there's no Russian flags, no Russian national anthem, no Russian officials, no Russian drug cheats, just proven clean Russian athletes as neutrals, well, hopefully, at any Olympic or Paralympic event in the next four years. And they can't host a major event which I think is good too. I don't understand the football side of it, whether they obviously just don't fall under the WADA rules or haven't signed up to them. But, you know, they have been getting around it and saying everything is fine by by putting on these sports events. So it's it's a huge story and massive implications for world sport. And you think, wow, Russia are banned. But actually, have they gone far enough? Well, no, not according to Rob Kohler, who's the former Deputy Director General of WADA. He left last year and he now heads up Global Athlete, a movement aiming to inspire athletes and drive change across the world of sport. And he's told anything but footy, these sanctions aren't enough. Today's decision by WADA has robbed athletes worldwide of the right to clean sport due to their inability to enforce the strongest possible sanctions on Russia. Strong sanctions, which would include it, a complete ban of Russia and Russian athletes at all international competitions, including the Olympic and Paralympic Games. I mean, Russia has carried out one of the biggest anti-doping frauds of this century, and WADA, who promised in September 2018 to enforce the strongest sanction, has shown it's simply a lapdog of the International Olympic Committee. I mean, there's never been a time, in my opinion, to press the WADA reset button to start over. Uh, the time is now. WADA's lack of independence, their inability to enforce the highest possible sanctions on Russia reinforces that the agency is really not fit for purpose. Uh, Russia has played WADA like fools and while doing so has undermined the integrity of sport. Uh, Athletes want and need a strong independent WADA and it's not what we have today. And from what we're seeing, it's clear from the athlete and public that WADA has prioritized the interests of the IOC From day one, the IOC has been lenient and has continued to give Russia their get-out-of-free-jail card. If Russians institutionalized doping and did not merit the highest sanctions from WADA, nothing will. WADA had the power, but in my opinion, lacked the courage to use that power. And likely, potentially, because of a fear of retribution that they experienced when they made a similar recommendation of a complete ban of Russia at the Rio 2000. 16 Olympic Games. You know, today's decision was highly predictable. um, And I also think it's predictable that Russia will appeal to the Court of Arbitration of Sport, another organization that is run by the International Olympic Committee and fully funded by the International Olympic Committee. If Russia does appeal, CAS has the ability to increase the sanction. So I hope they uphold the rule of law and take a brave stance that no one else has has done. And I think we're at a point now where athletes time and time are let down and it's time for athletes to speak up. It's time for every athlete to use their platform, whether it be on social media, international events, the Olympics or Olympic Games, to expressly and openly, freely express their opinion. And I encourage every athlete to use their voice. It's their fundamental right and sporting rules for unpaid workers, cannot trump basic human rights. Today is a sad day for clean sport, and I feel for every athlete going to the Games that potentially has to compete against Russia, and I feel for every Russian athlete that is stuck in a system where cultural change is very unlikely to come, and athletes are never, in Russia, left with a decision.
to compete clean because you're either part of the system or you're out. And that's a really interesting listen, that, from Rob Kohler. And I have to say, it's a listen that has changed my views, my opinions on this. Because I actually thought the decision previously, where by athletes who could prove they were clean athletes that were working outside the system, uh, were free to compete in the games, I actually thought that was a decent solution. But now, having heard what Rob has told Anything But Footy, and spoken to various contacts and read some, you know, opinion pieces today by mm. some journalists, some athletes who, you know, have strong views on this. I really have changed my opinion. I am in agreement. I don't think this ban goes far enough. And, you know, you look at something like the nation of South Africa um, under apartheid. They were banned completely. There were no, you know, anti-apartheid athletes allowed to compete. Now, the IOC yeah. will always say that they're a non-political organisation. They are the most political non-political organization you could possibly dream up on the face of this earth and i'm now of the opinion that every russian athlete whether they can prove they're clean or not should not be allowed to compete at events like the olympics the paralympics and events that come under the olympic and paralympic umbrella because Rob used the phrase, get out of jail free card. The IOC keep offering it up. And they did it before Rio. And I think what they made after that statement that WADA came out with last week, and we, we touched on it earlier, and last week the IOC said, yes, we, we'll support what you say, but we want to have some athletes who will go under a neutral flag. And that's that get out of jail free card. And another interesting bit that's come out as well, Michael, since that announcement, the Russian Olympic Committee say that it won't tolerate neutral status for Tokyo 2020 and points to technical divide that at the Olympics, athletes actually represent a national Olympic committee and not a country and therefore the Russian Olympic Committee is not accused of any wrongdoing so why can't the Russian Olympic Committee pick its athletes? Well it's a really interesting point and it's obviously the technicality that they will probably now go to the Court of Arbitration of Sport with. Um, they've got 21 days to appeal. I don't think this is the end of the story. I think we will be talking about this um, for many, many weeks and months. And again, we will probably be talking about this decision right up to the start of the Olympics and the Paralympics in 2020. There were 168 Russians or neutral athletes that competed in Pyeongchang. So that is still a pretty sizable team, <laughs> um, to be honest. That's 168 people uh, that have been able to prove that they work outside of the system. System. And when you go back to what happened pre-Rio, when obviously the athletic side of it, um, there was no athletes um, in track yeah. and field, but in other sports they were allowed to compete, you had a series of appeals and you had a series of appeals heard very late on in the day. And a lot of those appeals allowed athletes to go and compete because I believe there's just simply wasn't time to do the due diligence on this. And, you know, I would give credit here to the, the International Paralympic Committee. I think they've been the strongest governing body time after time after time on this issue and listening to people like Rob Kohler there and as I said reading and listening and speaking to other people I believe now that there should be this blanket ban and that is maybe the only way that Russia as a, as a country as a nation and let's remember the, the McLaren report went right back to the Ministry of Sport in Russia that is maybe the only way that they will learn their lesson and that certainly is what what the President Sir Craig Reedy said he said, for too long, the Russians and their doping have detracted from clean sport. And it is something that's gone on for too long. It's something we've been talking about for decades, for generations. Now, the UK anti-doping agency have said that this was the only option, the only possible outcome to reassure athletes and the public. As we heard from, from Rob Kohler, they haven't gone far enough in, in his views, but that's what the UK anti-doping agency said. The American counterparts, certainly not happy. To allow Russia to escape the complete ban is yet another devastating blow to clean athletes. And it says WADA promised the world back in 2018 that if Russia failed again to live up to its agreements, it would use the toughest sanction under the rule. Yet here we go again. WADA says one thing and does something entirely different. And this is the issue moving forward is that, you know, that 
as Rob said, have WADA been done enough? And, and are they the right people to, to do this? Because if you read the statement, Michael, as well, that came out of this, one of the conditions of reinstatement in four years' time will be that WADA remains satisfied throughout the four-year period that RUSADA, the Russian anti-doping agency's independence, is being respected and there is no improper outside interference with his operations, as you said about the McLaren report going all the way back to the Ministry of Sport. However... They've said there will be no special monitoring or supervision or takeover of their anti-doping activities. So in other words, we're saying you're bad for four years, but we'll just, we'll just let you get on with it. We trust in four years' time you'll be clean. Yeah. There isn't even that investigation ongoing. It just stinks to me that the the IOC, um, the, the Russians, and probably Vladimir Putin as well, are all a little bit too cosy because I think down the line... The IOC know that they are going to need Russia. You know, we're rapidly running out of, of cities, nations that want to step up and, and host games. That is now a, a shrinking pot, if you like. You know, there are, we've discussed it before, there are there are cities probably in Australia. There are limited cities um, in, in Europe, possibly London again. You know, America obviously has, has got the games in Los Angeles and Paris has got the games mm. in 2024. The Winter Olympics is a, is a huge issue for them. Who can afford to host a Winter Olympics? And I think down the line, the IOC know that they're going to need Russia and they're probably going to need Vladimir Putin as well. So it's certainly something that we are going to talk and return to, I'm sure, as we build up to Tokyo 2020. This is Anything But Footy, your Olympic and Paralympic sport podcast. And if you've got a view on that decision, which was made just hours before we recorded this episode, the four-year ban of uh, Russia um, from all Olympic and Paralympic events, including, of course, the Olympics and Paralympics, uh, go on our website, anythingbutfooty.com. You can send us a message on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, or you can tweet us at anythingbutf as well. And you can also email us as well. Uh, we have got an email address, anything but footy at gmail.com. Still to come, we're going to be talking sailing very shortly. Uh, we've got boxing, we've got athletics, and we've got taekwondo, plus much more on the agenda. 18 year old Freya Anderson is one of the new stars of British swimming and one to watch as we continue to count down to Tokyo. The teenager won two gold medals as Glasgow staged the 20th European Short Course Swimming Championships. That's 500 athletes from 50 European nations competing at the Toll Cross International Pool and contested in a smaller 25 metre pool than the usual Olympic size, which is 50. Races feature more turns and closer finishes and stuff, so it's a lot more uh, intricate in it's not just swimming up and down, if you like. Great Britain ended the week on 11 medals, three of those gold, which is the best tally since 2003, and fifth in the medal table, and Anderson secured her first senior international title with a stunning swim in the 100 metre freestyle, uh, swimming three personal bests in the process, bagged another gold over twice the distance in the 200 metre free, and then she won silver on the same night with the GB mixed 4x50 metre freestyle relay, and afterwards admitted she was pleased with the week's work, saying it's just amazing, I really didn't expect it. Some other medal winners, Rio silver medalist Siobhan Marie O'Connor won bronze in the 200 metre IM. Max Litzfield won his first senior international title with a brilliant gold in the 400 metre individual medley. World Championship medalist Duncan Scott broke the British 200 freestyle record with a silver. Georgia Davis won bronze in the women's 100 metre backstroke. In the men's 200 metre backstroke, Luke Greenback broke the 10 year British record to take a silver. Tom Dean silver in the 400 metre free. And on the final night, Molly Renshaw won silver in the 200 metre breaststroke and James Guy continued his comeback to form with a bronze in the 200 metre fly. In sailing, congratulations to Dylan Fletcher and Stuart Bithell, who won bronze at the 49er World Cup event in New Zealand. That was despite capsizing in their final race. They've been on the podium in every regatta they've entered this year, and they won gold at the European Championships. New Zealand, the host nation, won the gold. Germany won the silver, but things looking good for Dylan Fletcher. And Stuart Bithell, the sailing team, most of the sailing team, of course, already named for Tokyo 2020 as far as Team GB is concerned. There is, however, still some decisions to make. In the NACRA 17 class, uh, Brits John Gibson and Anna Burnett finished fourth. They missed a medal by four points. Their rivals, because remember, and we've spoken about this on Anything But Footy in a previous edition, we can only send one crew to Tokyo 2020s. Their rivals to be that crew, Ben Saxton and Nicky Boniface, finished sixth two places down so it would appear that John and Anna at the moment are in pole position 
Great Britain and Northern Ireland won five team gold medals at the 2019 Spa European Cross Country Championships in Lisbon to top the medal table once again. The senior men, women and mixed relay teams triumphed in the team standings while both junior squads won two. Andy Butchart's fifth and Ben Connor's ninth place ensured Britain finished ahead of Belgium in the men's race. Jess Judd and Charlotte Arter were sixth and seventh for the women and Britain's Sarah MacDonald helped ensure the favourites for the mixed relay won again too. And Britain won six medals in total at these cross-country championships with the women under 23 securing a bronze medal. Just a bit too late for the shortlist for Sports Personality of the Year, but Anthony Joshua is heavyweight champion of the world again after a... Excuse me, don't know what happened there. After a title fight in Riyadh, he won a unanimous points decision. The London 2012 gold medalist has regained his title from uh, Andy Ruiz Jr., who blamed three months of partying for losing that title. <laughs> it means the IBF, WBA, BA and WBO titles are back in Britain. Fight fans, though, I understand today, may need to wait over a year to see Anthony Joshua potentially fight Tyson Fury or Deontay Wilder. Uh, look at this list of names. Ali, Lewis, Holyfield, Tyson and Patterson. They are the only other boxers to reclaim a heavyweight title. So Anthony Joshua in fine company there. Triathlon and the cross-country stage of three-day eventing will start before breakfast time in Tokyo to try and combat the heat at next summer's Olympics, say organisers. The latest weather worries for Tokyo 2020 see the men's and women's individual triathlons starting in Tokyo at 6.30 in the morning. You're going to need an early alarm call, Michael. And the mixed relay at 7.30 a.m. And the cross-country part of the three-day event in equestrian will begin an hour earlier from 7.30. Now, we know the hot conditions next summer have already seen the International Olympic Committee relocate the marathon and race walk events 400 miles north to Sapporo. That has been ratified this week with both World Athletics and the IOC and even the organisers finally approving it. Uh, Some really early starts there as well, which I'll run through in a moment. But reports say it's going to cost an extra 70 million pounds to make that happen and as we talked earlier there isn't that much money going around the olympics or people wanting to spend for just four days worth of races the feedback from athletes and the competition schedules have been revamped so here's here's the new lineup for the race walk and marathon at 4 30 in the afternoon on august the 6th uh, the men's 220 kilometer race walk on august the 7th 5 30 a.m the men's 50-kilometre wow. race walk. I mean, you're going to have to be up about 3 o'clock in the morning to prepare if, for that. If not if not pull an all-nighter. Uh, you could do that, to be fair. Um, uh, 4.30pm, women's 20-kilometre race walk on the 7th of August as well. On the 8th of August, at 7am, the women's marathon. And at 7am on the 9th of August, the men's marathon. 68 names have been put on the list by British Athletics for their Olympic World Class Programme for 2020. They essentially have three levels of funding. They have podium funding, uh, they have podium potential funding, and they also have funding for relay teams. Now, Adam Jamili, following his fourth place finish in the individual 200 metres in Doha, is moved back onto podium funding. Uh, Abigail Irizuru, the long jumper, who uh, obviously did very well in reaching uh, the final in Doha, she's on podium funding now along with Tom Bosworth who's going to be one of those people uh, with an early start a race walker finished seventh in Doha and Jake Whiteman who finished fifth in the 1500 meters a genuine medal chance perhaps in Tokyo in the middle distances where the likes of uh, Ko, Cram and Ovette dominated for years and years finished fifth in Doha and he is on the podium funding as well just a reference to the Paralympic funding that announcement is now look set to be made in the new year because obviously their world championships were so late in Dubai. Other names on the list, Mo Farah, that will explain his recent announcement to return to the track. And a couple (laughs) that I think have have caught um, a few people by surprise, but I think we can probably explain them. Lindsay Sharp, despite the fact that, um, you know, she fell short of her expectations in, in Doha. And Ailey Doyle, who, of course, is currently pregnant, they both retain their funding, John. Yeah, Ailey Doyle, the much decorated 400 metre hurdler and relay runner, of course, and she's got that funding in the in the relay. She's been part of the team to win world and Olympic medals. Obviously, missed Doha this summer, as you say. She's expecting her first child in 2020. She was the team captain in 2017 in London, but her funding has been maintained. And she's spoken about how she, relieved she is and how she hopes to return to athletics. And I think it's the right decision, and it should be applauded. Actually, British athletics. We've had a few weeks where we've 
we've been uh, querying some of their decisions. But, uh, you know, remember that Alison Felix famously spoke out about Nike dropping her funding when she was pregnant. So it's good to see that the lottery money and this money um, from British athletics and UK sport is continuing to go to Ailey Doyle. And what we found out this week, Michael, as well, which surprised me slightly, is that they do get around £28,000 tax-free. Yes, um, someone tipped us off about that this week, didn't they? Mm. Which Loose is a, lips which, and all that. Which is a fair amount of money, tax-free. And the other interesting name on that who will be continuing to receive her funding is Lindsay Sharp. Now, if you were just looking at results uh, and results at, at the World Championship, you would have thought Lindsay Sharp might have dropped down that list. But she has had um, a very serious health scare um, recently as well. So I think, again, British athletics here have made the right decision. You know, if you were to walk into pretty much any other workplace on the planet or on, in this country and you were to say to someone, oh, you've got pregnant or you're having to take a bit of time off because you're recovering from a serious health scare, well, we'll just cut your money then, we'll cut your wages, they'd be straight in front of an employment tribunal. And, and that has happened. That, that's, that, for me, is the, the astounding thing, that, that in the past that's been the norm, that has been allowed to happen. You mentioned Alison Felix and Nike, and, and she wasn't unique in that. So, yes, absolutely quite right for Ailey Doyle and Lindsay Sharp to retain that level of funding. Um, but not everyone expects accepts it John no and that's the other interesting thing isn't it that you know you think oh you've got to have the money to be able to do what you do but Sophie McKinnon the shot putter who qualified for the Olympics with a personal best at the world championships uh, obviously I'm a huge fan uh, from the girl from Norfolk and she's turned down funding from British athletics and issued a statement explaining why and I thought it was worth highlighting she said ahead of the most important nine months of her life she's unwilling to risk changing preparations at this late stage that may affect her performance She's not ruling out taking funding going forward and thank British Athletics for their support and her sponsors and two employers. She has two jobs uh, that help her train and perform. And frankly, Michael, it's refreshing not to hear whinging athletes because it's not all about money. It is about delivering and trying to get ready and prepare yourself the best you can for those Olympics and see what happens. And good luck to Sophie uh, and particularly all of her team in 2020. I actually think the word Norfolk is probably now rivaling the words Gold Coast um, for (laughs) mention. on the Anything But Footy podcast. The Olympic and Paralympic Sport podcast, as I said, if you want to get in touch with us, you can find us on Google and on Apple Podcasts. If you'd like to write a nice comment about us, we'd love to read it. You can rate us there as well. You can also find us on Spotify. And don't forget, you've got all the usual ways of getting in touch. You can email us, anythingbutfooty at gmail.com. Find us online, anythingbutfooty.com is our website. And find us on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube as well. Plenty we had more a, still to come. We had a nice one this week, actually. Go on. To, Go on. on the reviews, on the ratings, on the Apple Podcasts, it says, I love football, but I was intrigued. And I'm delighted. And now you're part of my essential listening. Well, that's good. I love football too. And this is uh, part of my essential doing. (laughs) Uh, Still to come, uh, we talk uh, winter sport. We've got some Rugby Sevens news for you. And a, well, unlikely solution to shooting not being included on the programme for the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham in 2022. News on that coming up for you in the next five minutes or so. This is Anything But Footy. And Moscow, possibly for the last time, has been hosting Taekwondo's World Grand Prix final. They might not get the opportunity to do that again. Uh, Well done to Great Britain's Bradley Sinden. He won a silver medal there. Remember, he was the world champion when Manchester hosted the World Taekwondo Championship. Championships back in the spring. Now, Bianca Walkton, uh, an Olympic medalist, a world champion as well, she missed out on a medal this time around, losing in the semi finals. Uh, whilst two time Olympic champion Jay Jones, who's going for an unprecedented hat trick in Tokyo, she lost in the quarter finals. A disappointing result, I would say, by her own high standards. England men's sevens, rugby sevens, that is, secured bronze at the Emirates Airline Dubai sevens following a three-try victory over Samoa. Simon Amor's side had earlier lost to New Zealand in the semi-finals. And Amor, who will take charge of Team GB sevens, the men's team, next summer said it's a good start for the team on the World Series and it is all focused on Tokyo 2020 next summer. England's women finish ninth after beating Ireland. Good mention for Emirates Airlines there. Liked the way you shoehorned that in. Nothing to do with the fact that they do 
flights to Tokyo, which we might currently be looking at for next summer, uh, for example. Maybe there's an upgrade in there for us, I don't know, for copious mentions on the podcast. Uh, let's turn our attention to uh, winter sport, and GB has a new winter sports star. Her name is Vicky Williamson. That might be familiar to her. She familiar to you. It's certainly familiar to us because she swapped the programme at British Cycling uh, for the one at British Bobsleigh, the 26-year-old, uh, returned to the track after three years out with a serious injury. Now, she did take part in the World Championships in the team's sprint and finished 14th with Katie Marchant, uh, but she's announced in the week that we are recording this that she's now joining the bobsleigh programme after recovering from, get this, a fractured neck and back, dislocated pelvis and a slipped disc in her neck. So that's why it took her three years to get back and now she feels that what she has got um, back, I don't think she's properly recovered enough probably to become uh, get back to where she was as far as cycling was concerned what she has got though is that opportunity with her speed uh, to join the bobsleigh program and she actually finished fifth uh, with Misha Neil in her first event as well meanwhile British sliders began their world cup season at Lake Placid in New York Laura Dees finished 10th Olympic bronze medalist Dominic Parson in his first race actually since winning that bronze finished 13th and also Hannah Stevenson and Amelia Coltman won gold and silver in the European Cup skeleton and Corey Matt won a gold and silver in the Parabob in Lillehammer part of the Parasport World Cup as well. And talking of switching to snow sport, not actual events this time, but actual countries. 28-year-old Gus Kenworthy, who won Winter Olympic silver medal for the USA, will now compete for Great Britain. He has a British passport, was born in Chelmsford in Essex, not Norfolk, and has a British-born mother. Uh, Kenworthy won silver in slope style at the Sochi 2014 Games and also competed for the US in 2018. Now, he'll remain living in Los Angeles and has denied switching because it's easier to get picked for Team GB. Vicky Gosling, who's the Chief Executive Officer of Governing Body GB Snow Sport, said the inclusion of Gus in our squad can only raise our level of performance and make us even more competitive. And we're looking forward to speaking to Vicky in the second series of our Anything But Footy Great British Bosses podcast, which begins again in Olympic and Paralympic year 2020. Uh, we've got a cracking lineup of British bosses lined up for that series as well. Really looking forward to recording those interviews early in the new year. And talking of switches, well, we could be switching the Commonwealth Games of 2022, or at least some of it, to India. India could be linking up with Birmingham to host a special shooting event with medals going towards the main Commonwealth Games tally. Now, Inside the Games have been reporting this. They said it's a very early proposal. It's early days for David Grevenberg and his team at the Commonwealth Games Federation. Now, the background to this is Birmingham doesn't have the capability of hosting shooting. Now, when Manchester hosted the Games, they hosted the shooting in Surrey. And they obviously had to build special shooting facilities for the Olympic Games in London. Mm. They did manage in Glasgow um, to put on shooting there. And India has a real strong track record. And there's been talks of boycotts because of this. Uh, it's really not gone down well in India, which, of course, is, as far as population, is concerned and size of team a key key nation in the Commonwealth Games and mm. um, you really couldn't consider the Commonwealth Games without India lining up as part of it so they are looking at solutions for this and one of those solutions is that they might host a sort of shooting event around the same time going towards as I said that main Commonwealth Games tally and that would be hosted in India with all the other events in Birmingham now if you're listening to me now and thinking that's a bit odd take you back to 1956 the Olympic Games were held in Melbourne Australia Yet the equestrian event, uh, because of uh, various rules and regulations about bringing horses into Australia, the equestrian events were actually held in Stockholm. And I think going further back as well, I think Belgium and Holland once shared some Olympic events out as well. And talking of the Olympics in Australia, 1956 Melbourne, 2000 in Sydney, 2032, it could be Queensland. And there's a Gold Coast klaxon coming your way <laughs> uh, because <laughs> Brisbane and the Gold Coast, which I've actually been to for the Commonwealth Games, actually, uh, would be the two main centres for a Queensland bid for the 2032 Olympics and Paralympics. And that looks like it might happen. So, John, date for the diary, mm. Paris, 2024. Then I'll see you in Beverly Hills for LA 2028. And then maybe you could get yourself to Australia and the Gold Coast for 2032 <laughs> with me this time around. It'd be nice to have you there. I will so look forward to it. 
One final piece of news on anything but footy this week, and the GB Olympians Association have made a very important announcement. They've announced that the mental health charity Mind will be its chosen charity in 2020. Now, one in four people in the UK will experience mental health challenges, with many struggling to access the support they need, and that's where Mind helped. The fundraising will be in memory of the double Olympian and a world champion judoka Craig Fallon, who took his own life in 2019. So look out for various events during 2020, raising awareness and raising money for Mind. And keep downloading and subscribing to Anything But Footy for more details on that in due course, as well as all the best possible build-up to the Olympic and the Paralympic Games of Tokyo 2020. Sports Social Podcast Network. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper, a woo -er, a hand clapper, a high-fiver? I kind of like the high-five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At ChumbaCasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino-style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses, so don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.